Hello everyone and welcome to episode 50 of Minecraft. I made it to 50 episodes. <laughs> what can I say, man? What can I say? I just I just really like playing this game. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, is this I I feel like this is somewhat of an accomplishment for me, okay? I don't know. Uh to me. I've been thinking about 2022, you know, since it's uh, kind of the end of the year and uh, I think one of the things I'll remember, uh, you know, <laughs> for obvious reasons, you know, uh, if you check my channel out, if you check uh, the view counts of certain videos, is that, yeah, uh, this pro this is a year that, like, uh, my YouTube channel, like, grew, like, exponentially. <laughs> I mean, currently, like, my views aren't, you know, <laughs> uh, that high anymore, but I don't know, for one time, for a moment, for, like, a couple weeks there, for basically the entire month of like july and august it was like like my video my my like one video in particular just got a lot of views man it it just i don't know man <laughs> i've been i've been uh looking back and like watching episodes again yeah and i don't know the way the way i just like casually talked about it at first where, where it's like oh i got like it got 40 views and then the next episode oh it got 270 views and then the next episode it got over 500 and then i would assume uh, maybe in another another episode i mentioned that it got to a thousand and two thousand i mean yeah it just it just happened man yeah that's my computer by the way so yeah. Oh yeah, another update. Yeah. <laughs> another personal update. Uh yeah, prob uh that I can share is that I got another monitor. So, yeah. Uh my setup now is that I have one monitor for my computer and then I have one monitor to play games. So, yeah. That's pretty, you know, uh yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I mean, most frickin' streamers have like two monitors for frickin', uh, yeah, their PC alone, so, but, <laughs> I don't know. I thought of that, I thought of like, maybe like, but, but, I don't know, I just feel like it would be, what, like, what would be the point, you know? It'd be, it's so much better, better, uh, like, more convenient for me to just like, have a two monitor setup where one is only for games and one is only for the computer, and, yeah. And, like, you know, I basically kind of have, like, a two-monitor set up, like, with that, uh, with, yeah, in terms of, like, a PC, in terms, yeah, because, yeah, my laptop is, is still used to record the game, yeah, because my Elgato is plugged in, uh, to my laptop, which is, like, the streaming, uh, whatever, recording, uh, computer, so, yeah, basically, I'm surrounded by technology on all sides. I have my laptop plugged in which is recording the game, and then if I want to, I could just, like, it's my laptop and my other monitor is close enough on my desk, so, uh, whereas I could just, uh, plug an HDMI into this monitor and, like, uh, <laughs> plug in the keyboard, plug in, uh, the keyboard and then, yeah, uh, yeah, like, basically use it <laughs> on, yeah, basically use my laptop, uh, on a big monitor, so, yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, look at me bragging about having a setup, man. I don't know. I have to find something, okay? I mean, I don't know. A lot of people on, <laughs> a lot of people on freaking uh, book Twitter are, you know, uh, are talking about book deals they've gotten. Not really, not a lot, but you know, every every once in a while I see it. You know, not a lot. A few people, a few people I see on, uh, whatever, writing, publishing, Twitter, uh, you know, talk about. I've seen, yeah, a few people, a few, like, people that, like, whose tweets I see often got agents this year. Yeah, which is interesting. I can name, like, three or four? Like, three, four, like, five? That, like, who, who, accounts whose tweets I see regularly where, uh, they, yeah, they, you know, had a tweet announcing that, uh, they signed with an agent. And I think, like, one or two, one or two, like, already are on sub. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, which is like the step after getting an agent, right? Where it's like, where uh, your, uh, like, revised story gets, uh, where, like, you and your agent, like, send out uh, <laughs> your, your book slash your book story to publishers, to editors at publishing houses. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? It's nice. <sighs> we all have our successes, man.
<laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember I quote tweeted uh, a tweet, uh, like a tweet of an account who's mainly like on who's mainly a publishing book Twitter account, <laughs> right? Publishing book writing Twitter account. And then uh, the tweet, the, t pro the tweet prompt was like, uh, brag about something you've uh, you've accomplished this year. It's like big or small, you know, and obviously like, you know, most people were, you know, talking about bookish things. They were talking about, like, I would assume writing and their works in progress. But, like, <laughs> I just go ahead and quote tweet it and I'm like, uh, I got a video with 2.9k views. <laughs> I made an AMV that you can't see uh, because it got blocked. Uh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> and then I just put, like, I drank sparkling water. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just want, I just, I just saw that, and I was like, you know what? I should, like, actually, uh, I don't know, <laughs> publicly brag a little bit. I don't know. I've done stuff I'm proud, I'm proud of this year. I don't know. Yeah, I've been going back and forth on, what, like, whether I want this to be the last episode of the year. I mean, like, 50 is a nice round number. Uh, yeah, 50 is a nice round number to <laughs> end the year on, obviously, but I don't know. It's only the 16th, so, I mean, maybe I could, like, end it, like, on 51, but I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I think I'm leaning towards this being the last episode of the year, you know? Like, what, what else could happen between now and the 31st where, <laughs> where it would be urgent for me? <laughs> A few things could happen. A few things could happen. Uh, yeah, so, I guess, yeah. Those are some, like, I guess, quick updates, you know? What else has been going on in my life in particular, you know, that I want to brag about? <laughs> uh, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess. I guess I'll, I also go back and forth on whether I'm, like, transparent about other things in my life, but, you know. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I went to another concert, yeah, I went to, uh, see, uh, yeah, I don't think I've seen, I don't think I, uh, <laughs> like, ex uh, said, the, uh, what I saw, uh, this year, who I saw, like, the artists I've seen, yeah, the first concert I went to this year, it was back in, like, August, it was, uh, three, three bands, three bands that you would, uh, mostly categorize in, uh, the emo, uh, <laughs> uh, label, right, uh, not, you know, uh, Hot Topic, like, freaking Warp Tour emo, like, the, the emo I was talking about last episode, like, but not Midwest emo either, like, uh, <laughs> Fort Wave emo, oh, yeah, did I talk about that, did I talk about, like, the different waves of emo, I think I did talk about it, okay, yeah, briefly, there's four waves of emo, uh, Real emo only consists of the DC emotional hardcore scene. Uh, the like the f wave one is rights uh, is uh, a band called like Right Rights of Spring and a few other bands. The second wave uh, was yeah the first wave is in like the mid eighties mid to late eighties. The second wave was like bands like Sunny Day Real Estate, uh, <laughs> Christie Front Drive, Mineral Braid. Uh, Jimmy Eat World, yes, <laughs> that band, I think, I mean, I don't know, uh, Ian Cohen, I need you, <laughs> American Football, yeah, those bands, Third Wave is the hot topic kind of stuff, I feel like most people would label it, uh, Taking Back Sunday, you know, Panic at the Disco, MCR, I would, I would think, uh, Emo Revival was, like, started, uh, I feel like it's disputed. Some people say it's like Algernon Caldwalder. Some people are like, no, it started in the early 2010s with like modern baseball and like the world is a beautiful place, but I, and I am no longer afraid to die. Yes, that is the actual title of that band. <laughs> uh, uh, there's another band called uh, The Hotelier who uh, has like an album uh, that, that that's called... Uh, Home like no place is there. No place is one word. Uh, the album cover is a house. <laughs> oh man, I have no cooked food. <laughs> oh man, oh my god. Oh, well, I need to just cook this food then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah, Foxing, <laughs> which was one of the bands in that freaking lineup that I saw in August. Uh, it, I guess, is categorized in Fort Wave. Yeah. 
uh, <laughs> a little uh, known thing, I uh, didn't really listen to Foxing like at all <laughs> before I went to that concert. I don't know. I listened to their latest album. That's the only really thing I know them from. Their late they their latest album is called Draw Down the Moon. And <laughs> one thing that interested me about and which and made me want to listen to some of it was that the lead singer. Uh, described uh, the songs on that album as uh, uh, songs that kind of sound like Passion Pit. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> like, if you listen to those songs, yeah, like, yeah, what are songs on that album? Like, oh man, I don't know. Oh man, yeah, I'm blanking right now. I could search it up. I could search, I could search it up right now. Oh um, man, Draw Down to Moon, it was like, yeah, what's the second, if I can just like, like, find out the second song, the second song, man, please, here we go, I found, it's like right here, <laughs> yeah, Go Down Together, Go Down Together, like, Beacons and like, Draw Down to Moon, like, those songs, like, kind of actually do sound like Passion Pit a little bit, I see, <laughs> Go Down Together especially, yeah, like, like, kind of like, like, uh, in terms of like having like a synthy kind of element to it, you know, it's not like screamy, you know, the first track has like the first track 737 has like a bit where they scream, uh, where the lead singer like screams in it, you know, it starts off like slow and melodic, you know, and like a lullaby and then, you know, it gets harder and like, you know, the lead singer screams in the middle of it. Yeah. And then, yeah, go, <laughs> go down together is that song that's kind of sounds like Passion Pit. It also kind of sounds like group love, if you know that band. The, the band that made, uh, yeah, the band that had the hit, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tongue Tied, yeah. <laughs> Take me to your best friend's house, yes. Oh, man. Anyways, anyways, this was long. This was long. I do not have a problem filling these episodes out, man. <laughs> yeah, Foxing, I saw them. And then there was another band called Greet Death. And then there was another band called Home Is Where. Three of those bands that I guess like the <laughs> a lot of people who are into emo like I guess like Homesware is like a new 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 the newest band in that lineup yeah they're they're what you call fifth wave okay so fourth wave I guess uh a rough estimate of the years it contains is like 08 to like 2017 and then fifth wave as uh, the great Ian Cohen describes it, describes, uh, <laughs> I've heard from him, uh, he's a music journalist, you know, he wrote a lot of Pitchfork reviews, uh, yeah, look him up, uh, yeah, he describes, he, uh, I think denotes fifth wave emo as, like, 2017 until now, so, uh, yeah, basically, <laughs> what are some other fifth wave emo bands, yeah, Hey Illy, uh, lobster fight. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm being serious about these names, guys. Yeah, I think I said those names, these names before, but, uh, Guitar Fight from Fooly Cooly and Ogbert the Nerd. <laughs> yes. And also there's a band called Twinkle Park. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's, yeah, also another funny thing, there's, like, an album title. Yeah, there's... I see. I think it's it's in my library right now. I have my Spotify open. Let me just say the, this album title. There, there's a band called Awake But Still In Bed. And they put out an album. They put out an album. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this, this is the album title. This is the album title. They put out one album, I think. And they called their debut album. What people call low self-esteem is really just seeing yourself the way that other people see you. <laughs> That's the title of their album. That's the title of it. Oh, man. I like this to dual monitor setup. Yeah, it makes uh, talking about things a lot easier. So, yeah. Yeah, other things in the news. Yeah, I have Twitter. I have Twitter open. And... Yeah, so I guess this all this is gonna be my bit for this episode and maybe future maybe future episodes. So, I, there's a tweet from Bleacher Report and it says Anthony Davis, uh, parentheses right foot injury will not return tonight. So yeah, I I'm assuming there's a game yeah there's a game between uh, the Lakers and the Nuggets and I think the Lakers won it. Yeah, let me see, like right here. Yeah, the Lakers I think won the game. So yeah, the Lakers won it. 126 to 
what, 108? Yeah. So, yeah. It's interesting that the Lakers have been playing better, so. <laughs> they have been, but, like, they're still, like, a few games under 500. I mean, I don't know. But this recent win is a good sign, so. I didn't watch it, but. <laughs> oh, man. I think I'm running out of breath from this. It, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Uh, uh, I just need to catch my breath for a bit, yeah. <sighs> okay, yeah, let me let me just get the rest of that food. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, anyways. Uh, what What is it? The first concert I saw this year was, yeah, Fox and Greek Def Home is Where. It was cool, but, uh, yeah, I was vague about it last time, but last time I talked about it, but uh, the, the journalist I mentioned, Ian Cohen, I, uh, like, 99% sure he was at that show. He was at that show. <laughs> it was at, like, like yeah, I described it in an other episode. It was, like, a bar, but, like, there were, like, booths, like, you could sit at, like, in on, like, one side, right? Like, the stage was literally just, like, one corner. It was just, like, one freaking like, square corner. <laughs> like, the stage was really, really small, like, compared to the rest of the venue. The venue wasn't even that big. The, the, it's like the stage was, like, 5% of the venue, you know? Yeah, it, it, it really was like they were just playing in a bar. <laughs> yes, I did go to a bar. Yeah, I was 21. I, you know... Yeah, so it was before I before I turned twenty two. That is the first concert I went to. The second concert I went to uh, was to see Barty Strange uh, because yeah, I I <laughs> as soon as he announced that he had a headlining tour, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go see him because uh, yeah, his album Farm the Table was like one of my favorite albums that came out this year of the few albums that came out this year that I've listened to. Uh, yeah, the song Heavy Heart, it's, like, really, really good. Like, the whole album's pretty damn good. Yeah, Cosigns, Wretched, you know, Hennessy. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just naming the album. Yeah, it's a good album. You should go listen to it. Uh, yeah, basically. Uh, the two openers, yeah. Yeah, there was one band called Pom Pom Squad. They had a, a girl as a lead singer, and, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they made me, yeah. It's kind of, like, punk, yeah. It's kind of like punky kind of indie rock. I don't know if it was bubble grunge, as I've said before. Uh, yeah, there's another group, another opener. Yeah, these two people called uh, They Hate Change. And like, they, yeah, they're, 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 it was literally, they're literally just a rap group. And I don't think anyone expected that, to see them. I don't think anyone was expecting like a rap uh, duo to be like <laughs> one of the openers for Barty Strange. I feel like it was a bunch of like indie rock kind of listeners, <laughs> and then and then as soon as they came on stage, I feel like a I don't know, a lot of them like uh, didn't know what to do. <laughs> they yeah they tried to they tried they tried you know I think I think a lot of the, I think some of the crowd like was like really into it but yeah. It's not, it's not that they weren't, it's not that the crowd didn't enjoy them. It's, I think it, I just kind of noticed that, like, I don't think most of the crowd was prepared for a rap show, right? It's like, obviously, it's a different kind of, like, like, listener, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It must be interesting, like, you know, I don't know, going to see, like, uh, I don't know, Lil Uzi Vert or something, or, like, Playboy Cardi, and, like, the, like the etiquette or, like, the mannerisms of those people versus <laughs> the mannerisms of people who... Uh, you know, wanted to see this kind of indie rock artist, but it's like, Barty Strange, yeah, his music isn't purely, like, only indie rock, it's like, you know, yeah, Cosigns is basically like a, a trap rap song, basically, it's a trap rap song about bragging about indie fame, you know, he, like, in the song, he brags about knowing Bon Iver, he brags about freaking, like, he brags about, yeah, being on, uh, like, a FaceTime call with him, and then he, and then he's, like, yeah, bragging about, like, knowing, like, uh, Lucy Dacus, and, like, uh, yeah, Courtney Barnett, right, <laughs> like, I don't know, it literally is, like, an indie rock brag, brag rap song, like, <laughs> just, like, extremely freaking cool, Oh, man. Yeah. Huh. Just just really cool, I guess. That was the other concert I went to. Uh, yeah. What what topic did that spur from? Like, what did I do this year? Yeah. I guess. Any other thing I did? I mentioned that AMV. I don't know. I'm thinking of making another AMV. Yeah. I'm thinking of making one for uh, higher. Yeah. Than that Naked and Famous song. 
from the album I'm listening to almost obsessively, like, <laughs> right now. It's just really good, man. I don't know. Yeah, The Naked and Famous, really good. I already explained uh, them and why I like them, I guess. Huh. Anything else, man? Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> True. How long am I going to postpone talking about the latest publishing drama? <laughs> Uh, again, again, I would like to reiterate, I feel like I really am the only one, I feel like I'm really the only one who talks about publishing drama in Minecraft Xbox One Edition, right? Like, who else does this? Who else does this <laughs> for content? And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's it's not that I it's not that I'm chomping at the bit to talk about publishing drama. I don't know. It's just that it's just that I'm just soaking up information and the drama is just like a byproduct of it, right? It's like obviously it's like it would be cool if like, you know, publishing the book writing Twitter was only just like I don't know, agents, basic like agents and like readers, you know, just being friendly towards each other and just but I don't know. Yeah, but I guess that's also kinda I don't know. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a derogatory term. Like, drama, drama isn't, I'm not using the term drama in a derogatory manner, if you think that. I'm just, it's, it's more of like a comedic kind of thing to me. But like, I don't know. There are just some things where it's like, uh, some things that have happened this year that get labeled as drama, but like, <sighs> they're like varying degrees of like, conversations around them you know like i feel like so, i don't know I, I don't know <laughs> i don't know i would assume the conversations around like the ones we burn were like like a little a little like more important than like uh the one surrounding uh like the the feminist <laughs> odyssey retelling basically like i don't know like to me like it i guess i guess am i being rude in terms of like quantifying you know but like I'm I'm just saying that like it's not it's not I'm not using drama in a derogatory way like I'm just saying like the like all of these things are just things that happen that like get talked about that are like topics in in the publishing book writing Twitter community and sometimes they're like really really interesting slash important conversations that stem from what you know starts as like you know just d drama basically of just like oh. Yeah, like the light lark situation of just like, you know, the 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 thing of just like, okay, this book isn't good, but the greater conversation being like TikTok's influence on books, right? And also like, you know, <laughs> everything surrounding Colleen Hoover, right? Like it starts out as like, you know, a bunch of people saying like, I don't like her books, but I feel like <laughs> the greater conversation, uh, I guess is basically like, you know, I don't know. Like, tick to, yeah, tick again, like, TikTok's influence on books, and, you know, I guess, uh, by extension, like, in terms of, uh, the content of the books, like, writing about, uh, abusive relationships, and, like, what are people's opinions on that, yeah, yeah, so, <sighs> yeah, I'm just <laughs> talking a lot, yeah, I have, a, I guess I have a lot to say, <sighs> yeah, I just need to take deep breaths every time, <sighs> yeah, it's a lot, okay, it's a, it's a lot to get through, yeah. Anyways, yeah, what is the publishing drama that I want to avoid? I keep on saying publishing, I don't know. Book writing, Twitter community, publishing community, the, the greater, uh, <laughs> right, the greater sphere of that on Twitter. Yeah, because a lot of it, like, I don't know, like, I've, I've noticed, you know, on Twitter that, you know, there, are, like, the lines between, like, different, like, categories of people have been blurred a lot of the times, like, sometimes, basically. Meaning that, like, you know, there are, there are some, like, agents on Twitter who are also, like, otters. They're, they're, like, you know, they're, like, you know, uh, uh, like, me uh, uh, heads of, like, mentorship programs on Twitter who are also, like, otters and writers, you know? It's, like, it's not only that, like, only, there are only people who are, a who are agents and, or there are only people who are writers, you know? A lot of time, there are a few a few cases when there are agents who are like also writers, right? I f yeah, there's like one, yeah, true. There's one, yeah. I don't, there's a few. There's a few. Okay, I don't want to say there's one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> again, it's like I guess it's good. To, again, again, I guess it's like my advice. It's like 
uh, maybe in this instance, it's good to not be specific. Uh, this latest uh, bit of public, this latest bit of drama was, I guess, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I went back and forth in my head of basically when I first came across it of like, do I want to talk about this? I, I was even thinking of like tweeting about it. I was even thinking about tweeting about uh, making a tweet where I said I don't want to talk about it, but I don't know. Yeah, uh, and I think my conclusion is that I mostly do not want to talk about it, so yeah, sorry <laughs> if, if you wanted like an in-depth explanation. I think I've like resolved that I'm just gonna like, I think if people are interested, I'm gonna like post the Twitter tread uh, in the description because I bookmarked it <laughs> and like read through it, but yeah. Uh, man, I guess I guess I can be vague, right? Because you know, vague publishing tweet, <laughs> vague publishing drama. <laughs> you know, I can freaking do also. So I don't know what is what what. Yeah, again, basically, what like beyond the specifics of it? What is the greater conversation like around <laughs> the bit of drama that I feel like would be interesting to talk about? And like, what are my thoughts on it? <laughs> right. <sighs> Yeah, so it was basically <laughs> true. No, and then proceeds to like detail the specifics. I don't know. I feel like I did that a few times where I'm like, where I was, where I, I was like being vague and then being like, I don't want to talk about it, and then pr proceeds to talk about the specifics. Oh man, it had to do with a pitch event. Okay, there was a pitch event. There was <laughs> there was a pitch event. There was one person in that category I talked about, an agent who was also an author. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, this per yeah, the, the rule, the one rule and guideline of the specific event was that agents could not participate in the event, <laughs> and then you know, uh, connect the dots here. Uh, the guideline was not followed, and then, uh, in response, there was you know, a drama associated with that. <laughs> basically <laughs> I feel like that's uh, all I can like reasonably like talk about I don't know it's just not my place man it's just again yeah I think like <laughs> the importance of like being an adult is just realizing when just things aren't your place to talk about or like if you don't feel like y y your opinion can add much right you just don't you just choose not to talk about things I feel like yeah I don't know I don't know. I guess it's like, you know, my thoughts on pitch events could be interesting. I mean, I don't know. Because, uh, <laughs> if you check my Twitter, uh, really, really early, I actually did participate in, like, a couple Twitch event, uh, a couple Twitch events. No, I did not. I actually did participate in a couple, like, Twitter, like, uh, book pitching events. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's weird how, like, these pitching events started. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess. I guess it's, like, <laughs> important to need the context, right? The specific pitch event I'm talking about, which was the subject of the, the drama, was an event not focused on a pitching to agents, basically. Because, like, most Twitter pitch events involving books are ones where uh, you basically, like, pitch your book, like, as a mini kind of query as it, in a tweet. And then, like, a bunch of agents, like, will go over the hashtag you use for the event. And then, yeah, the leader, uh, yeah, if they want to request your work, they'll, you know, heart your pitch, you know. And, uh, yeah, and then people who aren't agents retweet uh, your pitch in order to get it more attention, right? Like, a, num a fair number of books uh, actually got to be, f yeah, no, came to be from that, yeah. Yeah, and examples of those type of Twitter pitch events are, yeah, DV Pit, Pit Mad, I think that's still happening. Yeah, those, those pits, those, yeah, Pitch War, I think Pitch Wars is different. I don't think Pitch Wars is, like, one singular pitch event, yeah. Pitch Wars is a thing where it's, like, yeah, it's basically a mentorship program, but, like, with the idea, the, the goal of, like, pitching your book to agents in mind, yeah, yeah, basically. It's a whole, it's a whole thing, yeah. <laughs> like, a lot of books came from Pitch Wars, yeah. And a lot of books uh, are the product of DV Pit, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> one example of, uh, like, a book that got published because an agent uh, liked an author's tweet. 
on Twitter <laughs> a few years ago. Is, yeah, is the book I got finished reading like a couple weeks ago. Or like, yeah, like a week or two ago. Yeah, Love, Hate, and Utter Filters. So, yeah, that was a book. That was an example of like a product of, you know, it got, you know, Samira Ahmed got her agent and a book deal. True. Well, got her, got her agent. Yeah, she got her agent through a Twitter pitch event. So, yeah, these events... Uh, have stories of like success for people who uh, choose to like create like a Twitter pitch, right? Because obviously with Twitter, it's like you can't make a tweet tread. Yeah, you can't make a tweet tread of like the book you're pitching, right? It like it has to fit in one tweet, like 280 characters, and like part of those characters are taken up by uh, part of those characters are taken up by like the hashtag, you know, hashtag. DV pit, and then you, and then you also have, like, other, and then you also have other signifiers of, like, you know, what the category is, YA, middle grade, adult, and, like, what the genre is, like, contemporary, romance, sci-fi, fantasy, you know, and basically, yeah, yeah, just, those are, you know, and I actually did participate in two of them, yeah, yeah, one in, like, (laughs) the very early pandemic, yeah, like, April, like, late April of 2020, yeah, <laughs> I did, yeah, it was a thing I talked about, like, way early on, I guess I can reveal it now that, uh, I actually did get a like from an agent, so, yeah, when I was talking about, like, the furthest I've gone in terms of, like, <laughs> publishing, that was actually the furthest, like, I went, is that an agent actually liked the tweet of my pitch, and then sent me a DM, uh, well, she like replied to that she replied to the original tweet saying can you send me a dm and then i uh dm'd her uh and then uh the she said uh can you like send over the first three chapters right uh of your manuscript and then i did yeah and that's basically like as far as it went yeah i don't know I feel like it i feel like i did not get a rejection you know i feel like you know i don't know it like yeah, the re- you know, I feel like, uh, you know, uh, basically, like, you know, considering the time, that was, like, a- end of April of, like, 2020, I mean, like, I don't know, like, I did get an email back saying, yeah, <laughs> the, fur- the furthest I've gone, again, <laughs> the furthest I've gone with this is that they, that agent sent me, sent me an email back, like, afterwards, I don't think, like, <laughs> I don't think she read the chapters, but I think she said, yeah, she said, uh, uh, yeah, thank you for sending it over, and then, and then she said in another sentence, I think I'll be requesting the full manuscript soon, or, like, I have a feeling I, she, uh, I will be, and then, yeah, <laughs> obviously, like, nothing came from that, but, you know, I mean, yeah, there's this thing called nudging with agents, where it's, like, you know, <laughs> you, like, send, like, a follow-up email on, like, a query that's, like, been, like, like, sent over, like, what, months ago, I guess, I would assume, right, but, yeah, I, I just didn't want to do that, I don't know, again, like, considering the time, right, of, like, April, end of April of 2020, like, I was not ready for freaking anything, uh, <laughs> of that matter, in terms of, like, you know, I was not ready to get, to, to, you know, <laughs> query or be agented at that time, so, you know, I, I like, I, I like, I liked, you know, where that, <laughs> ended up, but, you know, I'm, I'm, again, yeah, my plan, I think, I, that I talked about in earlier episodes hasn't changed, I still want to query in 2023, I still want to query next year, so, yeah, that's basically just my goal, so, yeah, anyways, yeah, uh, an, an update on my novel, I, uh, I have not finished it, so, yeah, <laughs> but I am gonna query sometime in 2023, I don't know, do the math, whatever, <laughs> anyways, yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't need to talk about that that drama with the pitch event. I feel like it's all over and done with. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think... Yeah, obviously. And it's obviously... Obviously. Yeah. I'll... I'll yeah, I'll just send a... I'll just put the post... The Twitter thread, if it's still here. Let me see. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's still there. It's still there, so... Yeah, basically. Unless that tweet thread gets deleted. You know, if it gets deleted, well then, you know, it's not it's not my thing. It's out of my hands at that point. So, yeah. Yeah, the tweet thread is basically just, like, you know, showing off, like, all the things that were, like, uh, that happened, you know. 
yeah, it, it was like a bit of, it was, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of things that, you know, it wasn't a lot of things. It wasn't anything too, like, dramatic. It wasn't anything too, like, harsh or like, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. At least I don't think so. I think, like, I don't know, for the people involved, they might have other opinions, but like, you know, yeah, in my opinion, I feel like it was like, yeah, yeah. I think, like, the people involved, like, say it was like, you know, <laughs> and a, uh, uh, and a, uh, like, kind of like a hard thing, but I don't know. Yeah, again, I do not want to put words in people's mouths, man. <laughs> the last thing I want to do, man, I put words in my own mouth, okay? <sighs> yeah, anyways. So, I guess that's uh, the drama that I will not talk about, but I kind of did, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, anyways, what else? What else? <laughs> I had a bit of NBA talk. Yeah, the Lakers are... I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, they were 11 and 16 before this Nuggets win. So now they're 12 and 16. So, yeah. Their next games are what? Yeah, the Suns, Hornets. Like, not in, not in this order, but like the Suns, Hornets. Not, not the Sixers. Yeah, they played the Sixers already. Uh, th those were t two of the teams I saw. Uh, I don't think they played the Magic. No, they don't. Yeah, the Celtics lost to the Magic tonight. <laughs> and yeah, the Lakers' previous game before the Nuggets was against the Celtics, and it was like a game where, you know, Boston had like a double-digit lead and then gave it up. The Lakers went on a run, and then, then the Lakers had double-digit lead uh, in the fourth quarter with like six minutes to go, and then Boston stormed back, and then... Uh, they wanted uh, Boston won the game in overtime. Yeah, AD missed two free throws. Yeah, basically, <laughs> it was a game, man. It was a, it was a game. <laughs> Further cementing Jason Tatum as the MVP. So yeah. <sighs> ah man, <laughs> any other any pressing NBA storylines? Oh yeah, they renamed all all the trophies. Yeah, I don't think they had names before, but yeah, they d officially decided to like give names to the, the major awards at the end of the season like yeah the mvp is michael jordan <laughs> yeah the mvp is named after michael jordan uh the sixth man is named award is named after uh john havlicek the rookie of the year award is named after uh wilt chamberlain the sixth man of the year award Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I already said the six man of the year. Most improved player award is named after George Mikan, I think. And yeah, anything else? Defensive player of the year award is named after uh, Hakeem Olajuwon. <laughs> you know, so other people. Yeah, and there, also there's a new award called the Clutch Player of the Year. Yeah, the Jerry West Clutch Player of the Year award. I really do wonder who's going to win that. <laughs> I think it's cool. I think it's cool that there is a Clutch Player of the Year award. I don't know. I feel like if you implemented it previous years, it probably would have been too, like, like obvious, right? I mean, I don't know. I feel like Dame would have won that award, like, a few years, you know? Like, like Dame, yeah, I don't know. Like, Steph Curry is known as, like, being, like, the greatest shooter ever, but it's, like, is, yeah, like, I guess, <laughs> oh, no, I'm starting a debate. Is Steph Curry Clutch? Is Steph curry clutch you know i don't know in terms of like like visible like clutch moments i mean i don't know from what i've seen like damian lillard man like i don't know if <laughs> i don't know if you've seen that one shot he had where he ended the freaking he ended a playoff series against the the oklahoma city thunder with a 30 foot shot at the end of at the end they were yeah they were leading 3-2 and then they won the series 4-2 with that shot like oh my i don't know man that's one of the greatest playoff shots of all time in my opinion Tough. portland has a timeout lillard a chance to send the thunder home Lillard, long range three, and it's good at the buzzer! Damian Lillard, are you kidding me? In my limited basketball viewing experience, yeah. I think from the same year, like, Kawhi had that shot uh, against uh, the Sixers. Yeah, when he played for Toronto, but I mean... I don't know, man. <laughs> How Damian Lillard just ended a series and then, he, and then he just waved goodbye to the team. He's just like, oh my god. Insane. Yeah. 
So anyways, I don't know. Who's gonna win this Clutch Player of the Year award? <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I think it'll it'll be interesting. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I guess those are the awards. What what else? What else? What else? What other pressing NBA storylines before I get back to uh, <laughs> other things? Oh man. Oh yeah, no more food, I guess. Yeah, again, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, I haven't done anything but just run around. I don't know. I think I'll go back to playing at some point, but <laughs> for now. Maybe, maybe the narrative throughout the the 50s of this series will be me me actually uh, playing the game. <laughs> but I don't know. I just yeah. Again, yeah. As I've said countless times, it's like I kind of like just I don't know when I focus more on like talking rather than playing. So yeah. Uh, it's not that I f really focused on playing back then, but yeah. I mean, I watch like old episodes back and then like. And then I'm like, and then I see it's like, wow, I was making progress. <laughs> I literally was. I literally was making progress. Oh man, I just don't. Yeah, yeah. I made progress in terms of getting coal. What about iron? Let me see if I can get iron. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> and then I just immediately forget that I need to get iron. Oh man. Oh man. Oh yeah. I don't know. Uh, I have like two torches. Oh man, dude. Yeah, I need iron so bad <laughs> anyways yeah anything else that is going on yeah oh this is cobblestone this is not oh my god I just want iron man iron how about that how about how about iron true oh <laughs> oh here's coal more coal yeah more coal for more torches I guess you have to take baby steps here <laughs> Oh man, I guess yeah, true. Maybe it's yeah. Maybe the last episodes were the first few episodes were better in terms of like conserving my breaths because you know I could just uh, breed when I was playing the game. Actually, oh man, <sighs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't have sparkling water near me, so yeah. <laughs> true. If my throat gets dry, so be it. Uh, I think it's starting to get a little dry right now. What happened here? What is this? What are you doing? Nope. Oh my god. Okay, there you go. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I really would like it. I really would like it if I could play this on the Series S. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. The, 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 yeah, this game, this, this specific version of the game got taken down. Uh... When? Because, yeah, when the whole, like, I don't know, like, one Minecraft thing happened where it's, like, they they, uh, they replaced Minecraft Xbox One Edition with just, like, Minecraft for Windows. And, like, they wanted to have it, like, be all unified, right? They didn't want to have different versions, so they stopped updating this. Hmm. Yeah, sad, man, sad. I remember, man, yeah. When was the last update to happen to this game, though? I think it was, like, 2017, I, I remember. Yeah, cause I the last thing I remember was was like the announcement that they they were gonna stop updating this. Any iron? No. At least I have enough armor, right? Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully I'll have enough iron armor. No. Just I'm just mining in any direction. <gasps> please, iron, iron, please, please, man. <laughs> Oh man, anything else that's happening? Anything, anything else that is happening? Oh yeah, yeah, true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is anyone interested in a little like baseball talk? Oh god, oh <laughs> this is a wow. Look at that. Oh, I guess this is kind of useful anyway. Yeah, don't I have to. Yeah, I guess I'll just dig all of this out. Yeah, a lot of it has been dug out already. That could be my grand project. I don't know. I had, yeah, <laughs> yeah, baseball talk. The Padres. Signed this guy called Xander Bogarts. He's a shortstop. Uh, there are there are already shortstops in San Diego. Yeah, Fernando Tatis Jr. For instance, who uh, uh, <laughs> uh, apparently had a ringworm, uh, which caused him to miss games. I don't know why. I don't know why he had to miss games due to ringworm. But uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, like, yeah, their their yeah, one of their, their other franchise player, like Manny Machado, uh, is also a shortstop, and he moved, I guess. And they have another shortstop called uh, freaking Hassan Kim, who's been playing in who's been playing in uh, 
uh, Tatis Jr.'s absence. So, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the Padres, uh, <laughs> for, according to baseball, uh, <laughs> people who know that sport are freaking loaded. And, like, <laughs> they're shilling out money, man. Yeah. How much money did he get? He got, like, $238 million over 13 years. And he's, like, 31 already? He's, like, 30? Oh, my God, dude. Yep. What a freaking time, man. What a time to be a fan of this team. <laughs> Just, like, right after, yeah, coming off the heels of beating freaking the Dodgers, who won 111 games. It's, like, man, dude. It's nice. It's a nice time, isn't it? Yeah. Really into win now. <laughs> uh, freaking uh mindset i guess so yeah yeah this guy called aaron judge he uh entered free agency for a little bit and then just uh signed uh, again with the yankees for like what 360 million because yeah he opted out of his contract last year because it was only like 230 million and then he got like another 130 million because you know he broke the al home run record yeah <laughs> anyways yeah, don't, don't, like, please, do not get it twisted, I do not know SH about baseball, but, <laughs> you know, hey, the Padres, you know, I think, I think I've, I've been interested in learning more, somewhat learning more, not in terms of, like, the history, but, like, I don't know, just having a, a, a somewhat, having a very, very, very general knowledge because of the Padres, yeah, so, anyways, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know if the Chargers were still here, whether I would be a fan of that other freaking sport, too. I don't know. It's too much for me, man. I don't know. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Ooh. Yeah, I already I already freaking rated this. Uh, <laughs> Mossy Cobble, though. Um, there's no... I have, don't have another pickaxe. Oh, man. Do I, how much coal do I have? I got, like, 22 from that. Ooh. See? Wow. <laughs> if anyone was watching this and wanted me to actually play the game, well then, yeah, I'm playing the game. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, mining. Interesting. <laughs> oh, man, true. I'm kind of, am I starved for topics? I don't know. Yeah, my, the, the, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, this could be my last episode of the year. I mean, I should have freaking things. Yeah, I think this should be the last episode of the year. Yeah, I think I'm recording this like uh, where it's like presum presumably it'll be the last the last episode of the year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the audio is getting uh, a bit worse uh, far away because I'm like leaning over <laughs> with my other monitor. Is there anything on Twitter that I should freaking uh talk about yeah let me just oh man oh no yeah no i could get killed by a mob oh no let me not do that let me just like escape yeah let me do this when i'm like home <laughs> uh anything any freaking iron no no oh my come on see see this is why i don't play the game no 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 oh my god how the hell did it blow up that far away uh, okay, all right, all right, all right, light, <laughs> please, Enderman, no, 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 oh, man, oh, God, yeah, yeah, anyone <laughs> see that, uh, the Twitter space feature, uh, is no longer on Twitter, <laughs> oh, man, oh, yeah, yeah, that's whatever, who, yeah, who cares, talking about Twitter's demise so freaking like, n early November of 2022, <laughs> oh, man, oh, my God, dude, uh, yeah, any, yeah, what's been going on? What's been going on? Oh, yeah, I've been seeing this. <laughs> I've been watching this anime recently. Yeah, it's called uh, Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro. It's, uh, yeah, th the first episode, like, like if you, if you, <laughs> I guess, are an anime fan. I don't know. If, if you are an anime fan and want to introduce someone to, like, watching anime that isn't, like, Demon Slayer, uh, uh, Chainsaw Man or anything like that, if they, I don't know, I feel like, you know, again, yeah, have I talked about this before, of just, like, with anime, oh my, why do you have an enchanted bow, yeah, have I talked about this before with anime, where it's, like, like, in order for someone, in order for me to, like, like, see someone, like, as an, as, like, a true 
anime fan, they have to be into weird stuff, man. Like, not weird as in, like, not, yeah, not nothing too weird, but it's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's cool that anime fandom has become more mainstream, but it's like, I just want, I just want more anime fans who are willing to, like, publicly, you know, talk about, you know, stuff that isn't, <laughs> you know. I mean, look, man, there's a line. I'm talking about shows like, uh, Nagatoro. I'm talking about shows like, uh, I don't know, Love Hina, basically. Yeah, Love Hina, Iran High School Host Club, you know, just, like, the stuff like that, you know? I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? I don't know, stuff like, uh, you know, just, just because there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of anime out there, you know? Obviously, people have their own tastes, but it's like, yeah. Uh, man, I don't know. Anyways, what is it about? It is about... Well, the first episode, I think, more so than the others, is about <laughs> a girl emotionally torturing a guy. <laughs> emotionally and physically torturing a guy to, to the point where he just, like, literally cries. And, uh, yeah, that's the first episode. Yeah, the, 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 it, it eases up a bit in, the, in, in later episodes, but, yeah, specifically the first episode, it, it is like... My god, I mean, you could call it bullying, but it's like, I don't know, uh, again, like, that, like, that's the impression you get from the first episode, that, where it's like, oh, is this seriously just a show where a girl bullies a guy? How is that, how can that be funny? But, you know, like, I think, you know, if you watch episodes 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, I feel like you, you can realize, like, oh, actually, you know, well, I guess, like, minor spoilers. It's like, oh, actually, this girl is, uh, has romantic feelings somewhat for this guy. And, like, oh, yeah, maybe, you know, uh, I don't know. She, she's, she's bad at communicating it. Yeah, I guess, basically. Anyways, anyways. Yeah, I talked about another show in that vein. Yeah, Takagi-san, where it was, where it's, it takes place in middle school. And, like, it's about this girl just, like, very playfully, cute, cutesily freaking teasing a guy. Yeah, and like he and this guy just freaking falls for it every single time. Yeah, this the the this one like Nagatoro is is the mo is like is like yeah like <laughs> it, it goes from teasing to like you know you know borderline bo borderline torture. So yeah, like comedically though, comedically in my opinion, I guess whatever. But yeah, I guess I guess if you don't want to watch that, then watch this series called uh, Mobile Suit Gundam: The Witch for Mercury. And yeah, it's actually the first Gundam series I've ever watched. Uh, what's a Gundam? It's 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 like a robot <laughs> that people build for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's a Gundam? Yeah, can I search that up? What is a Gundam? Uh, like yeah, it's the whole yeah the whole genre of anime. Yeah, mecha, which is robots, <laughs> giant freaking robots that fight each other. Sometimes, some of those shows are about robots you can. Like, pilot, some of those aren't, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I could, yeah. I mean, I could just spend episodes just name-dropping anime I've seen, but yeah. Oh, man. An anime I've recently seen that was kind of, yeah, that's not in the trashy category. Yeah. Yeah, it's called uh, My Love Story. Yeah, Ore Monogatari. Uh, not to be confused with, like, Bake Monogatari. Yeah, that's a totally different thing. But yeah, Ore Monogatari is about, is like, a basically just like, just a romance, yeah, like, it's just a romance, it's just a high school romance, and yeah, the you know, if you watched a lot of anime, you know, like, especially romance anime, it's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> a lot the, 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 the idea of progress is just like, basically just non-existent, it's literally just like, oh man, I don't know, it's it, like, I don't know. Like, you get, like, seven episodes in, and, like, all the, all they've done is just glance at each other, glance at each other, and then, like, hold hands once, awkwardly. But, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Like, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's interesting, my love story is, because, yeah, the main couple only takes, yeah, three episodes to, like, actually get together. So, yeah, I guess. I guess that's all, uh, all I'll say about that. Yeah, it's 24 episodes long, you know. Oh, man. Yeah, that's the anime I've been watching. Uh, yeah. There's this documentary. Yeah, there's this docuseries called uh, Last Chance U Basketball. Really good. I watched the first season. It's about this community college in East L.A. Uh, and it's it's basketball team. And it's like, you know, if you're into basketball, I would assume you would uh, really like it. 
you know, uh, <laughs> it follows th this, yeah, this team at, uh, at this school, and like, oh, you know, I mean, yeah, the, the series does a really good job of portraying a lot of the team as underdogs, like, because they are, right? Yeah, like, like yeah, <laughs> the, the concept of Last Chance U, because it wasn't originally basketball, it was like, you know, yeah, college football, but like, the concept is that it's all these players, like, quote, last chance at, like, uh, to play for a D Division One school, basically. I don't know. And a Division One school is, I guess, like, all of the schools people talk about when people talk about college athletics, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, nationally. But, yeah, I don't know. I guess, I don't know. Maybe there is, like, discussion about Division Two schools, but whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all these players' last chance at, like, going to a Division One, And, like, what's interesting is that, like, like well, there's one person in this season who actually did go to a Division One school. He went to, uh, yeah, he went to, was it Washington State University at first? And then he transferred to LSU, and then he got sent, and then, you know, things didn't work out. And then, yeah, he came, he came to uh, this college, East L.A., uh, college, community college, right, and then, yeah, it, you know, he's one of the people on the team, and, you know, it's all about these p players and their stories of, like, you know, how, uh, I guess, <laughs> for a lot of them, like, how they ended up here, and, like, their goals, basically, a lot of, the, a lot of them want to play for Division One schools, you know, yeah, for some of them, it's just, like, you know, they're choosing to just, like, play basketball there, right, because just hooping is just their lives, basically, yeah, there was one guy in the first season, yeah, who had this quote, who had this quote, and it's, it's all, like, freaking, it's, like, it's, like, slow, there's, like, a camera shot where it's, like, slow, and he's, like, carrying a basketball, and then he's, like, talking, and then he's, like, and then you just say, is, say, is like, saying, uh, there's a difference between, like, a hooper and a basketball player, you know, like, a hooper is, like, someone who's, like, where basketball is just their life, it's just what they do, like, a basketball player is just, like, someone who just plays, yeah. I'm butchering the quote, obviously, but, yeah. Yeah, it's cool, obviously. <laughs> I'm into freaking, uh, I guess, I guess, I guess, as a basketball enjoyer, on some level, <laughs> I'm into it. Oh, man, the coach is just so freaking energetic. He's just so fun to watch. He gets, he gets so angry, man. <laughs> he gets so, he go he goes from, like, 0 to 100, like, like, in a millisecond. He's just, he gets so angry. Yeah, and compared to another Netflix docu-series, you know, about, you know, uh, cheerleading, yeah, it's, it's good, I like it, yeah, I don't know, I'm not comparing the two, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, uh, yeah, this is a cool docu-series, there's no, like, awkward moments in it, it's, it doesn't make me painfully uncomfortable, it does not uncomfortable a lot of the times, it, it doesn't make me feel weird watching it, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> it's just cool, it's fun, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, anyways, that's what I've been watching, so. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, the first, yeah, the first season especially, right, where it ha has, because it, because the first season takes place during, like, I kind of realized it halfway through that it takes place during the 2019-2020 season, right? And, like, obviously, yeah, like, basketball seasons are played, like, fall, like, winter of, you know, 2019, yeah, it was played winter of 2019, through like the spring of 2020 like december through march of 20 december 2019 through march of 2020 the first season took place and you know the the the, the people who made the docuseries for the first season realized that and i feel like they were just using that to their advantage like all the time yeah yeah like the whole time basically i think the cheer documentary did it a, a tiny bit because, like, the cheer documentary is split up between, like, two halves. Like, the first four episodes, I think. The first four or five episodes are, like, like, like the following season uh, leading up to 2020. The following, like, yeah, like, <laughs> leading up to, uh, like, July. Yeah, leading up to 2020. And, like, the second one was, you know, uh, leading up to 2021. But, I don't know. For Last Chance U, for, for that series specifically, it's, like, I don't know. Just, like... You, you realize like two three episodes in where it's like oh this the, like tw this is like 2020 oh this is like january february of 2020 and then it's like in like i feel like in like one of the the second to last episodes 
I feel like there was like there, yeah, and also like events like you know Kobe Bryant passing away was an event in that story in that series because you know <laughs> I'd assume like it hits harder because it was East LA, a college in East LA, and Kobe Bryant, you know, but like uh like there's a moment in like either the second to last episode or the last episode where like there, it's like an empty room and the camera is just and like the focus is literally just like 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 a like a hand like i think like a like a hand sanitizer not hand sanitizer it's like it's literally like i don't know like one freaking uh, I don't know. I wish I could, like, pull it up. It's, it's, like, one sort of, like, like, cleaning thing. Oh, my God. I don't know. I'm really, really messing this up now. But, yeah, it, 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 it focused on a thing that was a reminder that, oh, there's a pandemic coming. Oh, this is literally early March of 2020. This is literally, like, days away from COVID, like, literally taking over the world. Oh, well, taking over the U.S., yeah, it, it, yeah, okay, I'm wrong, sorry, 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 it was in China and then Italy, I know, I know, I know my history, okay, <laughs> how could I not, man, <laughs> but, like, I don't know, yeah, it, it, like, it focused on a thing that was, that was, like, a reminder of that, like, very subtly, and then in the last episode, right, it was, like, like, there were, like, it included, it included scenes of them watching news reports, and them talking, like, they're not gonna cancel the event, are they? They're not gonna cancel this tournament, are they? Because, like, they were so close to freaking, uh, they were, yeah, they, the, that team in that season, in the first, uh, season of the series went like 29 and 1, and, you know, a lot of people were saying that they could have, that they were probably on their way towards the championship because that's the the ultimate goal of this coach is that he wants to lead this uh community college team to win a state championship you know yeah i don't know it was like oh man and then like the moment where they get a call and then they, they're just so solemn it's raining too right it's like the sky is gray and then they're you know just have this sullen look on his on their faces they do the players do when they get told the news and <laughs> the coach was like yep it's done it's over it got canceled <laughs> they they were on the bus they literally just went into the bus thinking like okay everything else got canceled but this isn't gonna get canceled right and then <laughs> oh my god oh man anyways the second season takes place yeah in 2021 yeah it starts like the fall of 2021 so there's none of that freaking impending doom in that in this current season so yeah great <laughs> oh man oh god any yeah just just fun yeah i guess if you like basketball yeah you'd probably like that series <laughs> yeah was i gonna yeah i was gonna like do just a quick scroll of twitter yeah <laughs> anyways yeah, should I quickly, in case this is the last episode of the year, just like quickly have my thoughts on the year? Yeah, it's been a good year. I, I did a good amount. Yeah, mostly. I think I feel like I'll remember this year. Uh, I won't mostly remember it for YouTube, but like I feel like that'll be a thing I'll remember when I think about this year of like, oh yeah, 2022 was when, you know, <laughs> a lot of videos on my YouTube channel like exploded like for a tiny bit and it was really freaking cool. It was really like a, a time, you know, I never thought I would have like a, over <laughs> any amount of subscribers. I never thought I would have 75 subscribers you know on my channel i'd never thought i would have a, a video in my life like that i uploaded to youtube like a minecraft video especially and have it reach like two point you know any sort of views like have it reach over a hundred views you know yeah like i did not uh think that at all and yeah like i wrote yeah again another thing i talked about in that quote tweet like i wrote consistently i wrote my novel from basically like january to december i did not skip a month there was never a month in this year where i uh withheld where i uh, wasn't writing my book so yeah that's one thing you know if i didn't fit if i don't finish my book this year that's one thing i'll hang my hat on is that like i wrote from january to december like you know every month i at least wrote some words you know that's good I got my Series S this year, I got another monitor this year, you know, uh, that's good, I discovered The Naked and Famous, they're one of my favorite 
uh, bands right now. Probably my favorite band from New Zealand right now. I went to two concerts. I saw, yeah, Barty Strange and freaking, yeah, Fox Inc. Greet Deaf Home is Where. I was in the presence of a music journalist, you know. Uh, I, I, I guess found a niche, a niche friggin' recapping, uh, publishing Twitter drama in a somewhat vague way, somewhat, somewhat, uh, too frickin' specific and, you know, uh, yeah, I had this kind of funny thought that, like, I was gonna be the frickin', like, scarce <laughs> of frickin' publishing Twitter drama, if you know who scarce is, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, hey guys, uh, Antidote Alarm here, and let me talk about the new, uh, <laughs> like, let me talk about the latest news, yeah, or like Philip DeFranco, yeah, Philip DeFranco, whatever, just someone who talks about news, but instead, <laughs> it's literally just freaking, uh, the latest, like, controversy or whatever kind of big thing that's, like, rippling over on freaking uh, book writing publishing Twitter, right? I just, like, have my intros, like, hey guys, it's Antidote Alarm here, and today we're gonna talk about uh, a lot of people's opinions on Colleen Hoover. <laughs> oh, man, oh, God, there is a... <laughs> There just continues to be discussion about Colleen Hoover, man. There just continues to be discussion on Colleen Hoover, man. Please. Yeah, I'm picking up my microphone now. I guess I'm kind of done playing the game. There continues to be discussion about Colleen Hoover. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, again, I have no opinion on this whatsoever, but there 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 is a question laid out to the greater uh reading, I guess, community. Uh the question is, does not liking calling who does not okay. <laughs> Let me try it again. The question is, does not liking Colleen Hoover make you a pick me girl? There you go. Yeah, anyways, uh <laughs> Yeah, I'm still, like, recording with this. Let me check. Let me check. Still here, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm still using my... I'm still... It's still recording audio. Let me see. Let me scroll through Twitter. <laughs> I'm getting the owner. Yeah, the owner says, The people have spoken. Accounts who dox my location will have their suspension lifted now. Yeah, that was a bit of drama. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there's someone, there's someone who tweeted, uh, their food at an NBA game. Is beef brisket supposed to look like this? And then the, the quote tweet says, ordered the Trey Young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Kyrie Irving had a game winner over the Raptors. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Anything interesting. AOC. AOC had a tweet. Journalism is supposed to speak truth to power, not bow to it. In a quote tweet of, uh, yeah. Yeah, NBC News temporarily suspended tech reporter Ben Collins from NBC and MSNBC Airwaves uh, because of criticism of the owner. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm just saying the owner. <laughs> oh, man. I'm only, like, probably, like, <laughs> going through the interesting ones here. Luca had a poster. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, like, this is, yeah, I guess this is, like, an idea of, like, what my timeline is, yeah. Oh, man, ooh, ew. I think this is a tweet, yeah. Apparently, uh, from this account, Lee Bardugo is writing a new book that's, like, a historical fantasy, hmm. Yeah, Lee Bardugo, author of Six of Crows and <laughs> uh, Crooked Kingdom, you know. Yeah, season two of Shadow and Bone is coming March of 2023, so... It's going to be interesting. There's going to be a Daisy Jones and the Six adaptation. And there's going to be a Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo av adaptation. Uh, yeah, both of those books. Yeah, Seven Husbands and Daisy Jones are by uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Anything else that's funny? Anything else that's a good... Like, yeah. Like, I don't know. This is, this, this is not... This is not how I make my t material. This is not how I get my material. Oh, yeah, Brittany Griner, yeah. Brittany Griner, the WNBA player, you know, of the Phoenix Mercury, got released from Russia. I don't... Did I talk about that this year? I don't think... I might have not have talked about it, yeah. Brittany Griner is a WNBA player. She plays for the Phoenix Mercury. In February, she was detained in Russia and then basically locked up for basically having cannabis oil in her bag. And yeah, she was playing internationally in Russia. It was a whole thing. 
There was a whole campaign to free Britney Griner. It it seemed like a hopeless situation for like a while, like a long time. I don't know. Like, yeah, like she had a trial. She was sentenced to nine years in a Russian prison. She got sent to a Russian penal colony, which is like, you know, not good, obviously. You know, there, you know, there are people like making it visible and like talking about it, but it's like, well, the most they could say is just free Britney Griner. Yeah. And yeah, she recently came home like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. There was a deal made. There was an exchange made for like a, a, a Russian, uh, a, a, a Russian in captivity that the U.S. is keeping, that the U.S. was keeping prisoner. And apparently, as Jamel Hill, yeah, a journalist, a sports journalist, says, suddenly everyone is is just an expert in geopolitics. Like suddenly everyone. Uh, there was a guy. <laughs> there was a guy <laughs> who was specifically called Pass Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> there was a guy specifically called. <laughs> <laughs> Maga Parsons <laughs> because of a tweet he made, but yeah, interesting, you know, uh, talking uh, apparently about the Britney Griner situation. But you know, obviously, the, the I feel like the consensus opinion here should be uh, that like we're half led that like it's a good thing that she's she's free now and she's home, right? Uh, you know, there's there's another prisoner, yeah, called Paul Whelan, who's still, like, in Russia, but it's like, uh, uh, God, this is just too much to get into. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there's the, the Barbie trailer. <laughs> the Barbie trailer uh, has, you know, is came out. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, for the movie. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Ash Ketchum is no officially no longer the main character of Pokemon. Yeah. Oh yeah, Ash Ketchum. No longer. Yeah, what the hell? Oh man, dude. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. I mean I mean, does anyone watch the Pokemon anime? <laughs> oh man. Oh god. Anything anything else? I think I would like just like one more freaking uh <laughs> I would like one more uh freaking yeah. <laughs> uh, one more episode, but I don't know. 50 is just such a nice round number. There's someone who tweeted, I must be one of the only people on book Twitter who isn't a Swifty. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of people on book Twitter are Swifties, yeah. <laughs> it's just because, like, Taylor Swift has, like, all these lyrics. There are just so many stand accounts that just post, like, but when she wrote, insert, like, lyrics here to a song, it's like, yeah, okay, she's a real, she's a good songwriter. Yes, I, I agree. <laughs> That's just stand Twitter, you know. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Anyways, anyways. Oh yeah, Steph Curry was injured recently, and then he got yeah, he's out for like, like few weeks. <laughs> at at the very least, his like shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not looking good for the Warriors. I don't know. Oh man. But, like, it not looking good for the Warriors could also look good for the Lakers, you know, in terms of, like, the Lakers making the play-in tournament and potentially the playoffs. So, yeah. Uh. Oh, hey, look at that. I have a, yeah, here's a Mori Calliope tweet. Yeah. Oh, she has, like, merch in stores. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> True. I wonder if I could see a Demon Dice tweet to go along with this. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's that's not a joke though. That's, that's that's not a joke. That's not like is that a mean thing to say? <laughs> <laughs> there's <laughs> there yeah this the, there's this one tweet yeah oh god I this the person's tweets come up a lot yeah I have just learned that romance novels without explicit sex scenes are called clean I wish to unlearn this information. No <laughs> uh, uh, oh man no. Uh. Oh, man. Wow. Anything. Sometimes there is, like, a surprising, like, person who comes up in my timeline where it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Chugga Conroy's com came up in my Twitter feed a few times. Yeah. Rivers Cuomo tweeted, Nice, I'm stoked you had me on the pod. I'm open for the collab. If Echo 2K is down, let me know and let's bring this combo to life. Who knows, maybe we'll manifest a banger fire emoji <laughs> this is good i should just do this i should just do this regularly regularly man <laughs> this is just fun oh man okay 
yeah refresh yeah anything else i did this year that's like i want to do a shout out yeah uh yeah for me and my personal growth i think i think i did lose a little bit of weight but i don't know yeah just tiny personal thing <laughs> i don't know i <laughs> I, ch- uh, I updated my twitter profile picture it's the same thing again it's me holding up a copy of the house on mango street i don't know it's just that i don't have that many creative ideas you know i could just have a picture of my face but it's like i don't know a lot of people have like twitter profile pictures yeah there's a there's a twitter account who's like like i mean meme twitter is its is its own thing but it's like there's a twitter account like whose profile image is literally just literally just danny phantom it's like <laughs> it's like it's it's like okay then i don't know there's like i don't know <laughs> it's weird isn't it oh man oh look at that lebron james was the oldest person old, the oldest player with 30 points in three straight games since january of january of 2002 he's in year 20 <laughs> Oh yeah, Manny Machado is expected to opt out of his contract after the 2023 season and enter free agency. Who knows, man? I mean, look, man, the Padres have lots of money. They can just sign him. They can just, they have like billions of dollars lying around, right? Oh man, they have money, man. The Padres have money is the thing I've learned. Ooh, a Tony Hawk tweet. Yeah. Yeah, see, (laughs) an example of like a surprising person that comes up. I guess I should wrap this up soon. Yeah. Okay. To those seeing pics of me using a cane and assuming it is a permanent situation, I had my femur surgically realigned two weeks ago in order to get back to what I love doing at a high level, and I'm taking it slow this time around. See you on the other side. And dude, yeah, Tony Hawk. Yeah, I yeah, did I? There was a Tony Hawk documentary I, documentary that came out on HBO Max. It's yeah, like about like his life. Yeah, like one of the things you learn is that like his body is just like how like how like the the entire beginning of the documentary is literally just him trying to attempt the 900 and it's just like dude he's still doing this in his 50s man like he doesn't he he retired doing the 900 but he's still trying to like skate at a high level like he's like 54 man it's like he like dude like tony hawk man it's like you can do other things you can like (laughs) like i don't know man it's an interesting thing, yeah, other skaters were in it, like, it documented his, like, career, basically, yeah, so, like, Rodney Mullen was in it, you know, and he talked about, like, skating just being a thing that, like, is, like, an urge that you, you can't, you have to do, you know, the way he does skating, like, Rodney Mullen does a lot of, like, manual tricks, yeah, anyways, yeah, <laughs> man, uh, god, that was a fun time. That was a fun time. Remember, remember, like, if anyone remembers Lunchtime with Smosh, remember freaking, uh, and the very first Lunchtime with Smosh, Ian or Anthony was like, uh, I'm gonna find, <laughs> yeah, either one of them were like, Ian slash Anthony is gonna find a Twitter question in, like, 2010. Oh, man. Sing the song. Sing the song. <laughs> Should I sing the song? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, God. Anyways. Yeah, that's basically uh, been my year so far. Yeah. If this is my last episode, if I'm just too lazy to just record another one, 2022 has been a nice year. I've really (laughs) enjoyed these past two years, Uh, 2021 and 2022. It's been, it's been, it's cool. I don't know. (laughs) Especially, yeah. One thing I'm looking forward to is finishing my book, so... (laughs) And doing these uh, prevents that. <laughs> it doesn't prevent it, obviously. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I honestly am almost done with it. So, yeah, basically. I Yeah, the latest thing I did was, like, uh, put, like, most of the chapters in a, in a manuscript format, basically. Which is, like, Times New Roman 12-point 12, 12 font, like, double-spaced, right? In a Word document, so, yeah. I'm excited, I guess. I did a whole day pass when frick. Oh man. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, 2022 has been an interesting year. Uh, am I gonna finish all those games I started? Probably not. I enjoyed <laughs> the Life is Strange episode chapter I finished. I hope to frickin' finish it uh, soon <laughs> on the Series S. Uh, it's been a cool year. I've done I've done a lot. I, I don't know. I guess I should start doing these, like, yearly updates. Will I, uh, <laughs> will I bring my blog back? Who knows? Will I do a wrap-up of the things I read this year? 
I want to, but I don't know. I think I'll consider it. I have nothing else to do. Yeah, I wrapped up as another semester. I guess that's all I'll say. Yeah, anyways, so... Huh, episode 50, huh? I guess. <laughs> I guess this has been episode 50. Uh, 50 episodes. 50 episodes. Yeah. I might, like, intercut these with, like, one of my... Yeah, maybe. Maybe... Yeah, I'm thinking of that. Yeah. Maybe that should be the last episode. Maybe the last... Yeah. It, it's not a guarantee... This is, this is not a guarantee that I'm gonna do this, but, like... Yeah, but, like, <laughs> I've been thinking that, like, I should just do a clip show, basically. You know? Yeah, I should just do a clip show where I'm like, remember, yeah, I named an episode Remember That Time. Like, I'm, yeah, d that, but, like, I actually find the clips of what I was talking about, so I won't have to bring them up, like, 5,000 times over and over and over again. So, yeah, uh, cool music, yeah, top albums of the year, yeah, The Foles album, Life Is Yours, Party Strange, Farm to Table, The Block Party album, Alpha Games. Uh, I think Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is, you know, one of my, my, the albums I listened to this year, so I'll put that there. Uh, there's this band called Soul Glow, Soul Glow, they released a cool album. Uh, albums that I didn't listen to, but I taught, but I think I'll like, uh, Pool Kids released an album called Pool Kids, their self-titled debut, their fifth wave emo. Uh, uh, <laughs> always, yeah, I've only listened to two songs, but I feel like I'd really like it. Wet Leg, li only listened to two songs, really feel like I'd enjoy it. Uh, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, anything, anything else? Yeah, my top song I discovered this year, Hearts Like Ours by The Naked and Famous, really, yeah. Probably, like, a close second would be, like, uh, <laughs> higher. <laughs> All of this, <laughs> but the close, like, fourth uh, or fifth would be Closer by Tegan and Sarah and, like, The Con by Tegan and Sarah, so, yeah. Uh, am I done? Am I done? Please, let me look, let me end this on a tweet. Please. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was a tweet, there was, there was a tweet, there was a tweet that said, like, your characters should stop sighing. I'm done. You, no, no one sighs that much in real life. Your characters need to stop freaking sighing. Writers, please, don't have your characters sigh that much. Please. Ugh, I am just so upset that, like, I whenever I read a book that, like, characters sigh, I'm just like... I just want to throw the book across the room. I'm, I'm done. I'm done reading. I'm not going to read another book. I'm literally going to throw it across the room if I, if I, read, if I pick up a book and a character size. <sighs> oh, man. Anyways. Anyways. Please. Anything else. Anything else. Yeah, true. I just won't leave. I just, I just won't leave. I just enjoy doing this too much. I really just enjoy doing this too much. Okay, all right. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Anything of the year. What is my... <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Oh, man. I don't know. I want. I still, I still want to do another one of these. I don't know. I think I might have been convinced uh, doing this that I want to do another one before the end of the year. So, uh -uh. anyways, that was episode 50. Uh, if you're watching up to do, up until this point, uh, I don't know how many people <laughs> who watch my videos watch until the end, but yeah, if you're watching up until this point, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, uh, if any new subscribers uh, this year have like watched my videos and like have watched till the end, uh, thank you, thank you to everyone who subscribed, thank you to the people who view, thank you to the people who view out of curiosity and just like immediately leave, thank you to anyone who raises my view count, including me. Thank you so much, man. I don't know. <laughs> it means it means it means a lot. It means it's nice that like people are viewing my videos <laughs> somewhat. <sighs> Anyways, thank you and good night. <laughs>